Yo, what's going on, everybody? It is Tuesday, October 22nd. Kind of a flat market today. Yo, some of you people have uh, took some issue with my gold uh, video yesterday. I just, you know, let me set the record straight. Like, you could you could go on this channel and Google. I mean, in, in May and in August, I've said that gold was going to go to new record all-time highs. And, you know, we can go all the way back to... And I said this yesterday, you could go all the way back to March 2022 when I was literally like screaming to buy gold. I talked about this yesterday. And, you know, I put out a bearish uh, video on September 25th saying that, you know, I'm, I'm sticking to my bearish outlook right now. Gold was at 2700, so now it's at 2760. So, I mean, big deal. You know, that's a very small percentage increase. All right, and a lot of this is just like hyper speculation. I keep telling you guys that if you look at producer commitments, I mean, they're really, really short and so are the banks and they're gonna win out. I mean, you might, you know, be laughing at it now. You might be mocking it now. You might be running after the price. I know a lot of you are and you're so proud of yourselves, but believe me, the producers and the banks are gonna win out on this. And, you know, we're going to come back to this when gold's a lot lower. And I said yesterday in my um, video, I said we could have a repeat, maybe not as, as prolonged, but I spoke about that rise from 1971 to 1980, $35 to $850. And then from $850, it went all the way down to like 200 bucks, 250 It stayed there for 27 years. All right. Now, I'm not saying that's going to happen again this time, but the economy is going to slow down and prices are going to come down. And the thing, you know, I've been seeing every kind of a headline that you can imagine about gold. Like it's the greatest investment in the world. It's the ultimate asset. It's never going to go down. I said they might as well take the L out of G-O-L-D and just call it God at this point. I mean, I see stuff like that, me personally. I mean, maybe you don't follow this kind of uh, line of thinking, but if I see something like that, I mean, wild horses can't stop me from wanting to go short or to at least get out of something like that. Because who's coming to the market right now? It's all the Johnny come lately because they're seeing it on TV commercials. They're seeing it on the news. People are talking about it. I got gold, blah, blah, blah. And so like they're jumping into it. I, I, I run away from that like the plague. If that's your thing, okay, more power to you. Go for it. But we'll be talking about this. The other thing I want to talk about is the bond market. The bond market is under pressure. From what I see, okay, from what I see, and I could be wrong, but I try to focus on reality. I try to focus on data. I try to focus on actual developments in the market, not not expectations or all this kind of touchy-feely stuff. From what I see, it's all speculative selling in the bond market. Okay, I not only do I follow futures commitments every week, but I also follow what the banks are doing in their in their you know cash uh in their cash uh, securities on their balance sheet. And they've been steadily buying treasuries. Okay, they have the highest treasury position right now. I believe it's like in 27 months. I have to go back and check, but it's it's way up there. They've been buying treasuries every week consistently, the banks, commercial banks. And in fact, and I think I might have even spoken about this, the banks have been kind of staying away from loans. Maybe not, you know, their fault uh, particularly. It might be that loan demand is weak, but... Um, we've had a recent increase in reserve balances and, you know, that just piles up on bank balance sheets. And so it's kind of a constraint because, you know, the more assets they have, they have to conform to regulatory mandates and they need the capital to justify those assets and reserve balances or assets. So they've been preferring treasuries to loans from what I could see in the data. So all this selling is speculative selling, and I have some anecdotal evidence. I mean, I saw interviews online 
where Stanley Drunkenheimer and, and people sent me some stuff from uh, Paul Tudor Jones. Remember Paul Tudor Jones, I spoke a lot about this guy over the years. America's going bankrupt, the debt, ba ba ba. You know, it's it's like you gotta wonder how this guy manages billions. Although I think he's had he's had a lot of um, redemptions from his fund, but because of spotty performance over the last couple of years. But I mean, they don't know anything. They don't know anything. I mean, it's the same garbage repeated over and over. The debt and ba ba ba. They don't understand. And so him and Drunkenheimer, they're short the bond market. And I would say that they're, they're a good representation of the hedge fund community. The hedge fund community is, is feeling real strong now. It's, it's, you know, feeling its oats. You know, we're gonna go against the Fed. You know, there used to be this old saying, never fight the Fed. And now these guys like Drunkenheimer and, you know, Drunkenheimer has been talking about the debt for so long you wonder how he has any money to manage. I don't know. Like he's just like comes on like an absolute complete fool who doesn't understand anything and just keeps talking about the debt. And a lot of you keep talking about the debt, which means like all of this stuff that I've been trying to explain and trying to teach and trying to educate. I mean, it's incredible. You just stick to the same script. Okay, one day the debt, one day the debt. You don't understand that for every, I mean, this is just basic accounting, man. For every debit, there's a credit. For every liability, there's an asset, okay? For every debtor, there's a creditor. So, I mean, the debt is whose debt? It's the government's debt, which means it's the non-government's credit. And it's just, it adds to the balances. When people talk about the, the money supply, they get it all wrong because they look at as, uh, kind of an outdated measure, M2, okay? And M2 is just like demand deposits and cash. It's like checking accounts and cash. Like hardly, who has a checking account anymore? Like really, like even if you do, I mean, the, the money supply is really the debt. That's all the dollars that exist in the world that haven't been taken back permanently by taxation uh, by the US government. So, I mean, it's, what is it, 35 trillion now? That's what we own collectively, the non-government. And that's dollars that the government uh, spent into the economy that it hasn't taxed away permanently. And the only liability that the government has is that it says it, can, it will accept those dollars for payment of taxes. That's it. It won't accept anything else. That's a liability that's not hard for the government to keep. And, and the world holds those dollars mostly in the form of government securities, treasuries. When the treasuries mature, the Fed has two different accounts. They have securities accounts and they have reserve accounts. When those maturities, uh, uh, when those uh, securities mature, the Fed just debits the, the securities account and credits the reserve account. It's like when, if you call your bank, let's say you have a savings account and a checking account, and you say, hey banker, can you please switch my money from my savings account to my checking account? There's no inability to do that. It's just, it's a bookkeeping entry. Okay, now your, your savings account is down $100 and now your checking account is up $100. It's exactly what happens when a, when a treasury matures. It's not like, oh my God, how are we gonna find the money? The money's there. It was there from the get-go. You had to have the money to buy the freaking bonds to begin with. You guys better wise up, man, because you know, like I'm, I try to do my best here in terms of uh, educating and, and imparting some knowledge, imparting some wisdom to you guys. And it's like, oh yeah, but you know, just wait, this is gonna happen. I'm wasting my time here, I'm wasting my breath. Why is it that you are so bought into some kind of mythology like that, that your brain is so small and so freaking, you know, like, unable to move out of its, its very tight, constrained thought processes. I used to be like that. I've said this many times, you know, way back in the mid nineties, when they started this show Squawk Box on CNBC, I was one of the first regular guest hosts of that show. I used to sit there with Mark Haynes, the late Mark Haynes. 
And I used to say the same shit like all these people like Peter Schiff and everybody else, like the US is bankrupt, China is financing us, the dollar is gonna crash. By the way, the dollar, I told you guys back in September, okay, I did a video on that. You could search the channel. I told you guys back in September when they were pounding the dollar, they were selling the dollar and every single day, there was some uh, news report or, or uh, online post or article. Many of them every single day. The dollar is done. The dollar is finished. The dollar is going to crash. The dollar is over. De-dollarization. I said, no, it's not going to happen. And I said that more. there's more dollars being held in the world. It doesn't matter who holds them. Like Russia doesn't have any anymore. So what? So other countries have them. China got rid of a lot, not a lot. I mean, they still have like a trillion, but they probably got rid of like uh, 200 billion worth. So what? Other countries stepped up and they got them. Doesn't matter who owns them. It's the fact that the matter is the amount of dollars being held globally by, by foreigners is at a record high. It's not going down, okay? I said that all the time when they sell the dollar on this stupid Oh, they're cutting interest rates, blah, blah, blah. The dollar's finished. You know, uh, de-dollarization, Bitcoin, gold, blah, you know, that's it. The bricks. It's bullshit. You don't know what you're talking about. And you buy into that stuff. I don't know why. I mean, it's like, you have you given up on yourself? That's another thing. Like, I come on here and I say, look, here's the thing about inflation. Here's the thing about interest rates. You're all crying like, oh, inflation. And I understand that. It sucks to go to the grocery store and have to pay more. But here we have these markets, free markets that everybody can participate in. And I'm, I'm not saying it's going to offset completely your hardship. But at least it gives you an opportunity to, to do something to hedge or protect yourself or make a little bit of money. Instead, you say, oh, poor me. Look at me, inflation, or, or interest rates are going up. Yeah, well, you can make money doing that. You don't have to be a freaking genius. I mean, the markets are there to use, but everybody, you're all sitting in your, in your, you know, I'm a victim of all this, and it's manipulated, and this and that. I mean, come on, people. Come on. You got to toughen up. You got to take command. Nobody's going to come to help you. I'm trying to help, you know, in, the, in any way that I can. Nobody's going to come to help you. You got to help yourself. And it's all right there. It's all right there. We live in a very wonderful, wonderful situation in society where you could take advantage of these things. Okay. You don't have to pass a test. You don't have to have any certain credentials. You don't have to live in a certain place or at a certain uh, strata or lifestyle. Everybody could take advantage of this stuff, at least to some degree. But instead, what, you cry and you whine and you bitch and you say how terrible things are. And then you want to point, you want to say, ah, he was wrong when he said that. It makes you feel good, right? He was wrong when he said that about gold. Ha, 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 it's still going up. Ha, ha, look at him. It makes you feel good when you say stuff like that. If that's, what, is that, if that's how you get your rocks off, all right, man. You know, what can I tell you? I'm here trying to help people. I don't even know sometimes why I do this crap. But uh, I'm here trying to help people. I'm trying to, you know, impart some wisdom, some education here. Uh, I mean, some of you are, you know, you're learning. You're picking it up. I know because I got people that I talk to all day long on emails and stuff like that. But I read some of the comments here and it goes right back to the same thing. Oh, you said this three months ago. Ha, 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 look at it. So what? So what? There's something to learn from everything, okay? I try to learn something every day. I try to do something hard every day. I'm 67 years old. I go box every morning, early, sparring with people, a lot younger than me. I get punched in the face, all right? Before that, I'm at the gym working out at five o'clock in the morning, all right? Today, I spend some time at the range, at the shooting range, which I, I go at least once or twice a week to the shooting range, if you like to do stuff like that. I like to do stuff like that. And so, yeah, that's it, folks. Anyway, 
I don't know what else to tell you. You could chase gold. If that's, if that's your thing, if you have no self-control, if you have no self-discipline and you just want to be, you know, with everybody else, when there's all these other opportunities around that nobody sees this low hanging fruit, like what gold was back in March, 2022, that nobody really wanted it. Nobody paid attention. You had the smallest, tiniest short position by the producers that I've seen in years, I was saying, hey, producers, they're like basically long their own product. You gotta get in. Who took advantage of that? I don't know, I did, all right? I sold out my gold stocks this year, but I mean, like, so what? It was a big gain and I'll wait again when it comes down and it'll come down and probably when it comes down, I know what's gonna happen. <laughs> I know exactly what's gonna happen. I'll be here doing videos saying you gotta buy gold and then it's gonna go down even more and you guys are gonna say, oh, look, he told us to buy gold. Ha ha ha, look, it's going down even more. I know that's gonna happen because it happens with everything else, everything else. I can remember every single time when the market went down and crashed and I told people you gotta buy the market and it went down more than what I said and I got reamed for that. I had cancellations left and right in my report. People saying, you're, you know, you're terrible, you're this, you're that. And now look at it. I mean, it's always gonna happen, that's human nature. You know, blame somebody else. Don't take uh, responsibility for your own whatever. All right, that's it. Please like and subscribe. I don't know how many you're gonna like after this, I don't care. Anyway, uh, I do care actually. And um, don't forget, go to my website, pitbulleconomics.com. Sign up for a 30-day free trial to MMT Trader. See you tomorrow. Bye.